We've heard a lot of talk about the Trump transition team. That's what everybody's been talking about, President-elect Trump. What about the Obama transition? Is he going quietly into retirement? No, absolutely not. He's going to do something we have not seen a president do in our lifetime. The last president to remain in Washington was Woodrow Wilson. And Obama has indicated he's going to be very active politically. So we want to talk to someone who knows him, who knows the political scene, who's been watching this. It's Dr. Randy Short we have on the line. Uh, Dr. Short is a Washington, D.C. native. He's a scholar, historian, human rights defender, social commentator, anti-eugenics advocate. He's worked with... uh, anti-eugenics activist Elaine Riddick and Dr. Alveda King. He's also a journalist, writer, social commentator. He has a degree from Howard University, a master's from Harvard University. University of Virginia has a PhD in African-American studies at one of those universities. And joining us now is Dr. Randy Short. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Short. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. I'm glad to be here. Now, of course, he has indicated that one of the things he's going to do, and he's just been talking about this the last couple of days, is he's going to uh, bring uh, work with Eric Holder to get involved in redistricting throughout the United States. He said the uh, Democrat Party needs to get more involved in local politics. And one of the problems that they have is that they've lost so many state legislatures to the Republicans that they don't control districting. And so that puts them at a disadvantage for congressional seats because both Republicans and Democrats uh, redistrict uh, congressional seats when they're in power. So what they're going to do, and this is why he's bringing uh, Eric Holder, they're going to get involved in a lot of lawsuits, but there's also going to be the kind of continuation of the climate change agenda, the health insurance agenda, and the Black Lives Matter agenda as well, isn't there, Doctor? Bingo. There you have it. And you may see some things that you haven't seen uh, hitherto. Uh, I suspect among people in the uh, immigrant communities and the uh, newer citizens. Look, let's be clear. What many people don't know is within the last few months, like Santa Claus is coming to town, George Soros, his group, Open Society, has been going to, in particular, uh, communities of color, focusing in on, on the grassroots organizations and groups and throwing out money. But people have to hook up with Black Lives Matter and other groups. In fact, this move was made right after the Democratic Party convention. So the groups aren't always named Black Lives Matter, but they're in uh, relationships. It's as if Black Lives Matter is the paymaster for uh, organizations among African Americans. And they've got preachers and churches and denominations and groups all behind this uh, agenda. And I'm very concerned about that. What I think uh, has happened and unfolded since we were fortunate to have Trump win on uh, November 8th. They, were, they failed in getting a large number of African Americans into the streets to fight uh, against the Trump victory. Now they're going to use churches, Democratic Party organizations, and others to draw uh, blacks into the fray because they know there's nothing more fractitious than the issue of race in this country. So you'll begin to get more conflict. And uh, in a sense, the game that will be played is that, hey, look, we're the only people that can calm things down, so you have to deal and talk to us. And what's disgusting about this, and particularly if we talk about Eric Holder, who is a Barbadian, uh, who's, uh, who's a trustee keeper of an abortion chop shop down in Atlanta, mm. who also got rid of the... Uh, he was one of the people in charge of, the, uh, of justice for the District of Columbia. I think, if not the solicitor, the assistant attorney general for Washington, D.C. He got rid of the Civilian Review Board, and police shootings and beatings went up, doubled. So, I mean, he's a brute. Yeah, and that's where they're going to come after people say they're talking about we're going to focus on issues like criminal justice reform, but we know precisely sure. what that's going to be. And as uh, Obama was telling uh, Time and NPR this week, he said uh, he wants to coach up and coming talent. But we know oh, really what they're going to do when he's talking about this. We've seen this with Bill Ayers and the other globalists. When Bill Ayers stopped bombing buildings and he got involved in educational reform, the SDS had been selling white skin privilege. They've been uh, fomenting a race war, this, this white skin privilege. 
privilege that we now see everywhere as white privilege. And he's been very successful in that because he stopped bombing and he started propagandizing the youth. And that seems to be the focus of Barack Obama now. They're going to stop bombing uh, other countries and now they're going to start propaganda propagandizing our youth as well as getting involved in massive lawsuits and unrest. Uh, exactly. Again, bingo. You think just like you're from the hood. I, I, I want to test your. I want to test your DNA. You're you're getting this. Look at it. Uh, you said white skin privilege. Let's just call this what this is. Eric Holder and Obama are both. You can tell are, are visibly recently had someone white in their family. They're pimping what I would call the mulatto privilege. We have a color issue, uh, not just among blacks and whites each, but we have a color issue in the African-American community. These guys are, are playing the role of lighter-skinned blacks who are sort of the children of the master, who are hijacking leadership of the black community, pretending to be their caregeepers and that they're the ones who are going to guide us. And in reality, uh, if you look at Eric Holder, he doesn't care anything about African-Americans. What did he do when he was attorney general? The same guns that he was dumping on the poor folks of Mexico ended up on the st Chicago people of color dying in both locales. Exactly. What, Fast and Furious. Did, exactly. Did, and, mm -hmm. and, and Obama is, a again, a person who's got his feet in both communities and likes one and doesn't like the other. He hasn't done anything for African-Americans. In fact, him connecting with Eric Holder is quite interesting because Obama has no base among African-Americans outside of what the media has made for him. If anyone takes four or five minutes to start studying Obama, uh, they're going to find there's no there there. Why isn't he going back to Chicago? I'll share with you why real fast. Well, he says he's staying in Washington because he wants uh, Sasha to finish her last two years. So he's going to spend, according to Zillow, $22,000 a month renting this mansion in one of the most expensive neighborhoods in Washington. He's not going back to the hood to help people. He got real rich. I, I, you know, he's not going to leave the White House with a few millions like the Clintons. I've heard that he's got tens of millions of dollars for all the deals that he's made, all the banks that have been bailed out while um, Wall Street got bailed out and Main Street got uh, left behind. He was counting on dividing this country and getting the coastal elites to vote for him. And they could ignore the flyover uh, communities in America. Mm -hmm. I'll just give you an example. Uh, while he didn't, I was completely unhappy with what he did with Flint. I cannot, uh, I would be just an, a bigot to not mention when the, the coal dust was in the water for whites and West Virginia, not a frigging thing was said about that. That's right. How, how in God's name is that not racist when you have power to deliver a safe, clean water, no matter what color? Or on the Indian reservations, this man doesn't care about people. Now, I, I always let people know I attended Harvard the same three years as Obama. I was not in the school of law. I was in the school of religion. And my introduction to Obama was walking into an all-white meeting where he was the speaker to the Federalist Society. And what he was saying was how much he hated black people. And how he knew how to bamboozle and manipulate and trick them and take advantage of them. And they were too stupid to see it. This happened in 1988. Wow. It was in the Harkness Commons. And I saw Obama. Our eyes met for a minute. And I thought about whether I would bust up this meeting. But I was the only black person. If the folks are bigots, they don't like me. And, of course, he doesn't like half of himself. I just decided to leave the building and find someone who knew who this dangerous mulatto was. And I saw some guys and said, hey, who's the mulatto in there? He can lie better than 10 Richard Nixon's blindfolded. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be president, and he's going to stab black people in the backs and walk over us to get to where he's going. And that's where I heard the name Obama, not Obama. And if you live in Washington or in certain African-American communities, Bama is a low-class, no-good despicable person that you cannot trust. In fact, if you call a person a Bama here, you could get yourself killed. Wow. So that was my interest. I says, oh my God, Obama, what a terrible name. I said he's going to be <laughs> well, he's, he's had so many different names, Dr. Short. I'm sorry, we're out of time, but we're going to be following this. And if people think that this 
tumult that we've had leading up to uh, the Electoral College is something. Wait until Obama stays in Washington. He's going to be leading a shadow government there. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Randy Short. In case you haven't heard, InfoWars has become the most influential media outlet in America. We're making freedom go viral. And now we are proud to announce a new weapon in the epic battle against the globalist. InfoWars Prime. Where you can watch live, high-definition feeds of The Alex Jones Show, plus exclusive insider videos from the InfoWars crew and behind-the-scenes action. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash app and download today. InfoWars Prime is available right now for your iPhone or Android. You will have access to exclusive videos that you can't see anywhere else. And that means live coverage of events and breaking news on location as it happens. You can also take advantage of amazing deals from the InfoWars store that are only available for InfoWars Prime subscribers. That's InfoWars Prime at InfoWars.com forward slash app. If you can hear my voice, you are the resistance.